This is an introduction to timber design. I will be giving this introduction according to the national design specification for wood construction based on the 2015 edition. Although this is for the 2015 edition, many of the things that will be covered will be appropriate for our previous editions and also some of the later editions. The first thing that we need to cover is the idea that we will be doing this um, introduction on the basis of allowable stress design or ASD. And the basic concept that we want to get by uh, looking at allowable stress design is that we want our allowable stresses in the structure to be greater than the actual stresses. And in the NDS code, they use the type of notation that we see here. We use capital letters with an apostrophe to indicate allowable stress, usually in PSI. We use lowercase lo letters to indicate actual stresses. So the stresses that are caused by the real loads in the real world need to be less than the stresses that are allowed so that we have a safe design. So we will keep coming back to this type of formula often. In fact, here I just have the generic expression for allowable stresses greater than or equal to the actual stresses. Really what will happen is there will also be some subscripts on each of these F variables. For example, if we were considering bending stresses, then we would see that the allowable stress would look like this over here, where we see FB prime is equal to uh, the product of some terms over here. And if we looked at the actual bending stresses, we would put a little subscript B on that F also. Now, with that in hand, we need to look a little bit further at uh, some examples, more examples of what this, uh, the terms in this equation could look like. For example, we could have um, from the National Di Design Specification Supplement, which we'll be looking at later in a later video, uh, we can look up values for bending stress, uh, tension stress, shear stress, compression perpendicular to grain, compression parallel to grain, and even the modulus of elasticity. We would look up those values depending on the species of wood that we are going to be using in our design. For instance, for a beam or a tension member uh, or perhaps a column. And those values that we look up in the NDS supplement are what we call table values or tabulated stresses. Those are the values that are going to go into this expression for the allowable stress. We'll get a table value and notice it does not have a prime on it yet. When it comes from the table it has no prime. It's also going to be adjusted by some adjustment factors and we're going to learn about those. In this example that you see right here we have that the bending stress is multiplied times this duration factor C sub D and a repetitive use factor C sub R. We'll learn more about that later but for now it's sufficient to just simply understand that our allowable stresses will come from the multiplication of the table value times some adjustment factors. We also um, can now look a little bit further and uh, see some further examples uh, about this. For example, as we indicated, uh, we have some adjustment factors that might need to be multiplied times the tabulated value. 
Now in this equation too, I just show two examples of adjust adjustment factors. There could actually be more adjustment factors than just two. And in fact, we see that these adjustment factors are all multiplied together. And so a generic way of writing this is to say that our allowable stress, whatever type it might be, it could be bending, compression, shear, etc. It will come from a tabula tabulated value multiplied times the, the product of all applicable adjustment factors. And that's exactly what this capital PI symbol is trying to represent, the product of all applicable adjustment factors. Now, we can look down here at the bottom of this document and we can see that here is a list of adjustment factors. And these are the ones that are most common. Some of them are not used very often, but these are ones that you will often see. For instance, there's the duration factor, a wet service factor or moisture factor, a size factor, flat use factor, incising factor for uh, wood when it is pressure treated and then there is a temperature factor repetitive use factor column stability factor and a beam stability factor now that is a lot of information and it can be pretty confusing knowing when to use these adjustment factors and when they are applicable to you and in order to know that the National Design Specification has a bunch of tables that help you understand and know what adjustment factors might be appropriate for you in a given situation. And in a later video, we're going to look at some of these tables that I have listed here and explain how those tables help you find the adjustment factors and whether or not they apply to you. So these tables are very, very important uh, when asking yourself questions about adjustment factors. Never forget, come and look at these tables depending on which category you fall into. If you are designing sawn lumber, well then you'd go to this table, table 4.3.1. If you were designing glue lamb beams, well, then you'd come to table 5.3.1 and look at the adjustment factors that might apply in that situation. So in summary, we can uh, simply realize, hopefully, that this is the equation for allowable stress design that we have to satisfy in order that we have a safe design. Our task is to figure out how do we get F prime and how do we get the actual stresses lower case F? And if we can compare them, we can see whether or not we have a safe design.